Dear Sheila, I've just come across your last letter, the one with the snaps of you winter sporting. Who's your fabulous skiing instructor? Tell me more. It's always the same old dreary things in this part of the world, but I did get a job at Moore's, which is the store for miles around. It's the only one with a clue about fashion, and we get everything that's all the rage. Dad treated me to a new sweater and slacks for my birthday. Mum was a bit envious, so she came in and bought some like mine. Dad liked them on me, but he wasn't sure about Mum, and then he forgot their wedding anniversary. I've got friendly with a girl in our department. She's the quiet type, not like me. <laughs> Remember the giggles we had at school together? Some of the mums prefer to be served by Anne. She's so sensible. Anne used to live with her sister and her brother-in-law. Joan's a love, but George, he acts really old, like at least 40 instead of 27. Always laying down the law. He'd go crazy if he knew that women had the vote. only surprised that her sister hasn't gone round the bend. Anyway, Anne decided she'd have to break out. After all, she's earning her own living. So she said to me, what about sharing a flat? Super! Well, Mum and I got prepared for Dad's reactions. You're only 18. Won't eat properly. You'll run up bills. Supposing a fuse blows. What then? Etc, etc. Then we just let the storm blow out, and after that, he was good as gold. Mum's on my side. Brother-in-law George, though, went on and on at Anne. Didn't so much give his approval as show at the door. And is George mean? He thinks all women are idiots, especially with money. Won't even let Joan have a bank account. 23 years old, a married woman, and not trusted with a checkbook. Yes, please. Cash for everything. I can say is, if I were married to George, ooh, I'd have graced the top of the stairs ages ago. How does Joan take it? Oh, no! Nearly all our customers pay by check. Check! The new, fabulous paper product perforated for easy tearing. The big pack with the bonus record stubs. Check only needs your signature to personalise an exclusive product. You'll like signing your name. Check for confidence in a woman's world. Quite so. Dad told me what went on. He took me to see his bank manager because he said I should know about money. Mr. Palmer made me feel all adult and trusted. He was very hopeful about the flat, too. Said if I needed a loan, he'd help. Dad would have to back it, of course. But once he goes for an idea, Dad can't stop until he's followed it right through. Anyway, he started me off with a £50 cheque. Brother-in-law George wouldn't help Anne with a thing, but she's marvellous with a needle. And Sister Joan helped out with useful bits and pieces for the kitchen. Eventually, we found one large room with the kitchen in a cupboard, literally. And a bathroom down the hall we share with an old dear who we thought might be trouble if we played records, etc. But it really was the best place we'd seen. 
We nearly got involved in a perfect place. Only we'd have been responsible for everything. But Mr. Palmer at the bank looked into it, and he warned us off. With this place, there was quite a bit of fixing up to do, so I roped in Dick. The one I met bowling. He's an accountant. Sounds deadly. But quite the reverse, I assure you. He's a terrific dancer. With an old car, he's sort of fixed up himself. So, I thought he'd be good with a hammer, etc. But he said no. He thought he'd be better in the kitchen. Anyway, we'd only been in the flat a few weeks when the first crisis blew up. Anne was almost in tears. She'd lost her purse out of her handbag. Every penny of twelve pounds just disappeared. Gone, flown, nicked. <laughs> of course, she shouldn't have been carrying so much cash. And in the end, she had to go to dull, dead, dreary George. Keep your money in a safe place, he said. George does. So safe, it took Anne half an hour to get any blood out of the old stone. Resented every penny he lent her. <laughs> Charming. I mean, if he hadn't come across, our independent living plan would have found her completely. We'd have finished up in digs with the dragon of a landlady, like Dick's. She thinks he ought to spend more time studying. He's certainly got a lot to learn. But we're going on a rally together. It's all a bit of a mystery. I'm navigating. Hmm, could finish up anywhere. Afterwards, we're having a party, bringing back a whole crowd. Anne's organising it all. I'll have to be off now. More news later. I completely forgot there's been a big interruption. Dreamy Tom. All because of the rally. Everything was perfect until I lost the way. Let me to read his stupid map. Dick kept saying it was disaster, disaster. But really, Sheila, he makes such a fuss over little things. It could have happened to anyone. I was really off, Dick, by the time Tom came by. Trouble. So when I had this chance of a live back with him, well, what would you have done? And Tom's car's so cosy. Almost forgotten we'd given Dick a tow. Of course, he wouldn't be parted from his car. By the time we got home, he was half dead from frostbite. Anyway, we all staggered into the flat to find Anne doing her smiling through tears with stiff upper lip bit. There was a horrible feeling of no party hanging about. When I looked round, there was Dick comforting Anne. Men, I ask you. But Tom said, not to worry. Not to worry. And everyone was racing off madly in all directions to get supplies. All Anne could do was keep saying she was sorry. Sorry? Ten people coming to a party and all we have is two chops, a pound of potatoes, frozen peas, two cans of beans and eight crackers from Christmas. Can 
just what you need to make a party swing, of course. Do you know what she told me? She said she paid a lot of bills. What bills? Those bills behind the bread bin. Those bills behind the bread bin? I nearly died. It was brother-in-law George's fault. He'd frightened Anne off having a bank account. Told her it was better to keep her money somewhere safe. Pay everything in cash and know where she was. Ha, ha. The trouble was our financial arrangement was just a trifle involved. Anne was going to be responsible for running the flat, and then I'd pay her with a cheque. But Anne hadn't a bank account. So, in the end, we muddled along on a day-to-day -day basis. Fatal. Hence the bills behind the bread bin. Before I went off on the rally, I told Anne I'd send off cheques that very Sunday. What? Trouble is, Anne doesn't listen. She started cleaning up, found the bills, and, such is Dread George's hold upon her, she got scared. So, Anne set off on the debtor's round. Result was, she hadn't a penny to buy a thing for the party. But Dreamboat Tom arrived back with loads of stuff. Even old Miss Thing along the hall brought her rum and black currant medicine. Cunning old thing. It was really wild when she did the can-can. And in the end, the party turned out to be great. <laughs> There was Dick, showing Anne how to use a checkbook at a party. I was furious. Tom's got a fabulous sense of humour, though, and even I saw the funny side. I looked, they were disappearing for a little check writing practice. All right. Meow. But anything that puts our collective finances on a sound footing's okay by me. Monday midday, and he got her to the bank on time. Then, a few days later, Anne went over to Sister Joan to repay brother in law George, all ready for the usual moral lecture. When she got there, she was greeted with the news that George was flat on his back, mysteriously taken to his bed, laid low by Joan. That afternoon, she'd taken home a letter from the company she works for, saying that in future, all their people could be paid by cheque. So now she had a bank account. He said it was flu, but Joan told Anne that it was her assault on his masculine principles that had brought on a nervous crisis. So, when Anne whipped out her checkbook to repay the money he'd lent her, the poor old square's temperature shot up a couple more notches. The pompous old wingbag just collapsed at the sight of two militant women. The things a checkbook does for you. Not that the boys need converting. Have to dash now. Lots of love, Liz. P.S. What do you think of jointing?